My favorite singing group right there. They sing all the time. They sing in the car at home, and it's always a blessing. Um, our girls love to sing. And you know what? Our, our kids, you know, when you see missionary kids come through, you think, well, those are the, the missionary kids. But I like to think of them as uh, kid missionaries. They are a part. They're missionaries. They're going to the Philippines. God has something for their lives, and we want uh, them to be involved as much as possible. They like to set up the table. They like to give out the prayer cards, and we know that God is going to use them, and we're really looking forward to that. But um, it, it's, it, it's good being on deputation. There's, um, we talked to one missionary. He said, uh, be, being on deputation, going around, raising support from churches is just another form of purgatory. And uh, I, I can't say that I uh, have seen it that way. We have really loved deputation. I don't have any bad stories. We've met a lot of good people and a lot of people praying for us now, which we have really seen uh, a lot of answered prayers. And we know that it's because people like you uh, are faithful to praying for missionaries. Thank you for doing that, for supporting your missionary. Thank you uh, for your heart for missions. Um, if you have your Bibles, if we turn to Psalm 37, we'll be there. But uh, I do want to talk about the Philippines a little bit and uh, definitely willing to take any questions um, we can leave some time at the end. If anyone has any questions, we can do that. Um, Philippines is a beautiful country. The first time I went was 2011. Um, I'll give you a little backstory, though. Um, I met my wife, you saw in the video, at Pensacola Christian College. We actually met on the first day of class. Uh, it was HI 101. And I remember the teacher said something like, you might be sitting next to someone that you will marry one day. And that turned out to be true because my wife was sitting right in front of me and I didn't know her from anything. To be honest with you, I didn't even know where the Philippines was. My geography wasn't that good. I just knew this girl's really beautiful and I want to talk to her. Um, but the problem was I was very shy and introverted. I just couldn't, uh, couldn't do that. Uh, God worked that out though. And uh, eventually I got up the courage to, to talk with her. And um, God has really um, blessed our lives. Um, blessed us with three girls, and they're all healthy, and it's all only by God's grace. We, I did not, um, I got saved when I was nine years old. I did not feel a, a calling to missions, foreign missions at that time, um, but I did, I did say, God, whatever you want me to do, uh, that's what I want you, that's what I want to do. Um, I went to, uh, it was the, uh, the Bill Rice Ranch uh, when I was, yeah, I went every couple of years, but I, I, I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, that's what I want to do. I will go, and Lord, I just want to be used. Lord, please use us. And that, that's still my prayer. God, just use us, please. Um, but I went to school for computer science and software engineering. I uh, studied very hard. My wife um, went into nursing, and she studied very hard, very, very good student, much better than me. And then uh, she went on, she got her master's degree, and became a nurse practitioner, and she has been practicing for... Uh, the past decade, and uh, studying nephrology, that is the study of kidneys, so any questions about that, come and see her, as I mentioned earlier, but, uh, but we, we always wanted to be involved in missions, and I, I didn't know to what capacity uh, we wanted to be involved in church, we gave the missions, when we, there was an opportunity to go on a mission trip, so we went, and after we got married, we started to go to the Philippines. She said, you need to come to the Philippines. My wife has been on many missions trips. She even lived in the Philippines when she was a little girl. She was born in the States, um, but her parents uh, were born in the Philippines, and they came here in the late 80s, and, she, and then she was born here. And so she was well acquainted with the culture. She grew up in it. She knows the language. And uh, one missionary told me, you're, you're halfway there, Tom. Um, you, you have a Filipino wife, and she's going to help you a lot with that, and she has. Um, but that, I, I like to say that is the most beautiful thing about the Philippines, that is the people. They are very welcoming and um, very hospitable people, loving, caring people. And they always, it's, it's good. Um, ministry is really, really good in the Philippines. And we're blessed that God has called us to go there. Um, but I want to talk about, I mentioned it just briefly this morning. How does a missionary know where God has called them to go? How does, how does anyone know uh, specifically what God has for their lives? Um, you know, we're uh, being raised in a Christian home and being brought up in church. You learn all kinds of things in Sunday schools. I'm sure they're learning uh, even today. Uh, what is right and wrong? What pleases God? What doesn't please God? Um, there are many things that are 
very plainly spelled out in the Bible. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. There are some things that we know are the exact will of God. This is what God wants you to do. And everything, give thanks. That's very simple. What is the will of God for your life? Well, make sure you're giving thanks. Um, my, my youth leader used to tell me, Tom, uh, you know what, the will of God in your life, Tom, do you brush your teeth? Um, what are you talking about? Do I brush them? Yeah, I brush my teeth. Do the things that you know you're supposed to do. Give thanks. Uh, be in church. Be faithful. Um, be involved. Your pastor says to, to do something. We need help. Get involved. Um, that, that is the will of God for you. Um, uh, Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So there are some things that are very, very clear to us. This is the will of God. I know I'm supposed to do this. I know I'm supposed to live a holy, separated life. Um, but what about when you come to something in your Christian life that is not, um, not, not clearly written out in Scripture, not just for you? Like, for example, what college do I go to? Or uh, what person, Lord, do you want me to marry? That it's not that person's name is not written down in the Bible. How am I supposed to know that exactly? And, and these are some of the questions that I had, um, kind of working through this call. Is this what God wants us to do? And um, and God gave me a verse here in Psalm 37, and we'll go through this. It's a promise, a promise from God's word that, that will help you with that. Um, there are many things you can go through the Old Testament. I, I've been reading through. Um, uh, the, the books there, the first five books of the Bible, and you see all kinds of uh, law, the Ten Commandments. Uh, so we know what is right and wrong. Those things are pretty clear. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Th those are kind of easy, if I can say it that way. We know not to do those things. It's plain, black and white. But what about when you have to choose between something that is good and, and what is best? How do we know what God's mind is, what his will is in a specific decision in our lives. How do we know? Can God help us with that? And I believe that there is a promise in the Bible uh, that will show us that. But let's, let's pray, and then we'll get right into this verse, and I'll show you what God has given to us. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this church just um, allowing us to come. Lord, we, we want to please you this morning. I pray that this verse in Psalm 37 would help um, if there's someone here that there's a decision in their lives that they, they, they need to make and they're a little bit unsure about uh, what you would have for them to do, I pray that this verse would give clarity and you would just uh, guide our lives. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So I, I started to wonder as we, um, as we started going to the Philippines, I remember the first time, uh, I, I like to describe the Philippines like this. If you've ever uh, baked cookies in an oven, you go ahead and you preheat the oven and then you wait till it gets up to 350 degrees. And then you go, you get your cookie tray, and you're going to put it in the oven. You open the oven, and what happens? That wave of heat just blasts you right in the face. And that's what I like to say. When you get to the Philippines, you go through that, those doors at the airport, that heat is just going to hit you in the face. The Philippines is right on the equator, so it is very hot. And my senses were just completely overwhelmed. I've never been in a place like this. It's like a different world. Uh, in the Philippines, the uh, uh, th there are sounds. In Metro Manila, everyone's honking their horns. Uh, that's just the way they drive over there. I like to say that there, there's traffic lights, there are signs everywhere, uh, but they might as well just be Christmas lights because they don't really mean anything. Uh, the driving there is, is a little bit crazy, and, uh, but that's just the way it is. And then the billboards there, you'll have, uh, they're just as tall as buildings. Everything is just large and there's need everywhere. And the city of Manila, I, uh, I mentioned earlier, there are over 100, um, over 1 million homeless children. And so the need is everywhere. We were driving to the first spot. We were going to meet up with the national pastors there uh, with the group. And we, we drove through the city. And I remember getting stopped in traffic because in the city of Manila, there, the infrastructure is just not there. There is so many people. Uh, there's traffic all the time, and I mean all hours of the day. Uh, 3 a.m., you go to the airport, you're going to hit traffic. That's just the way it is. They cannot, they, they don't have the money to build out roads any bigger, so it's just jam-packed. Um, but we were stopped in traffic, and I remember just trying to take everything in. And in the Philippines, everyone drives a diesel car. So if you know that smell of diesel, it's just in the air. You smell it everywhere. 
And uh, there was a, a tapping at the window. I thought, this is strange. We're in traffic. Who is this? And there is this, uh, there is this old beggar woman just right at the window, right at my face like this, just looking in. And I was, man, what a place. Where am I right now? Um, but God was showing me the need. Man, there's a need. I promise if you'd all go to the Philippines this morning, you would all be burdened. You'd be burdened uh, for the Philippines. But just because God has burdened you for something does not mean he has called you to go there. And that's kind of what I was struggling with. Lord, I, I see the need. I, I see the people are very open to the gospel here. And, and you know what? To be honest, I was kind of happy. When, I, when we left uh, the Philippines and came back to the States, I was almost kissing the ground. Because, like, man, it's so good to be back in America where I got my comfort and everything. The thought of going to the Philippines, man, that was scary. It really scared me. And I thought, man, I'm glad there's other missionaries going to the Philippines because they really need it there. And so every two years, we kept going back. And it was in 2016, a national pastor talked to me and said, Tom, have you ever considered coming to the Philippines to work full-time as a missionary? I was like, oh, you had to ask that question. Of course it was on my heart. Of course I was thinking about that. But now here's this man of God that's been faithful for so many years, came to me. And God used him to speak to me because I went home and it scared me so much because uh, we, were, we were involved in church. We were going on missions trips. We were doing all the things that we knew to do that were God's will. But was God calling us to go to the Philippines? How do I know that? God, you have to show me. You know, in the Old Testament, you have Moses and, and God tells him in the burning bush, uh, you know, go and free my people. Well, God, I could really use a burning bush right now. I'd really like a sign of some kind. Um, but God's not coming to us in burning bushes, but there's a promise here in the Bible. Uh, those of us that are saved, we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to us, and, and there is a verse here where God will, will show you. God will give you the desire that he wants you to have. Um, but, but let's read that here in Psalm 37, verse number four. I won't keep you long. I know it's already late. We'll get to this. <clears throat> the Bible says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way uh, unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Uh, a strange thing happened. Uh, I look at my Christian life. There's a couple of big milestones, obviously getting saved. Well, I remember that. I remember that night. I'll never forget it. I was nine years old. We were in an old-fashioned tent meeting here in Livonia, Michigan, out in the parking lot. They had a big old tent. I remember they had sawdust. It was an old-fashioned camp meeting. And I remember that smell. But I remember the conviction. I knew I wasn't saved. And that preacher was preaching, that old preacher. And uh, I, uh, man, I knew it. I needed to be saved. And I remember so timid, so scared, because I didn't want anyone to think badly of me. But I was just hanging on to the back of that seat. and I, But I finally gave in. I went up to my dad and told him, Dad, I need to be saved. He took me forward, and I got saved. And I remember walking out of the tent that night, and I felt like there was this huge burden that had just been lifted off of my shoulders. And I remember just running through the parking lot in between cars. I think I got in trouble because I was running in the parking lot, but I didn't care. I was just glad to be saved. And so that was the one big milestone in my life. I got uh, baptized after that. But then... Uh, a couple of years ago, when God started working on our hearts about this calling of the Philippines, God did something. God started to change my desires. I had desires um, to grow old and to uh, live in the, the dream home that we, we got in. I like to tell people that we've kind of lived the American dream. Uh, we got into the careers that we wanted and God blessed us. We were still involved in church, but we kind of climbed the corporate ladder of success. All the things I wanted, God allowed us to get. Um, and, and I had desires to, just to, to, to support missionaries and to go out, but I never thought God would call me to go. Uh, to be honest, I, just, I had all, all the comforts, and um, I was uh, uh, doing well in my career. Uh, I was getting raises and uh, promotions, and my wife, when we were starting to rub shoulders with the I don't know, the uh, CEOs and the doctors and stuff, and we'd go to their houses, and they'd have us over, and like, man, our house is nice, but look at their house. It's even nicer. And uh, it was like we could never fully um, meet the, these desires that we were having, but then God did something. We started to delight in him, and he started to give us the desires of our heart. The second part of this verse here, there's two types of promises in the Bible. There are conditional promises, and then there are unconditional promises. 
Um, I could go through many, but I'll give you one unconditional promise from God. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 11, it says this. You all know the story. Even the kids uh, know the story about Noah. Uh, the Bible says, And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more uh, be a flood to destroy the earth. So here we have an unconditional promises uh, from God. I love unconditional promises because there is no condition to be met. We don't have, we don't have any responsibilities uh, in this promise here that was given in Genesis 9. God says, I'm not going to flood the earth again. There's, nothing, there's no condition to be met there. This is, it's unconditional. But there are uh, other uh, promises in the Bible that have a condition that has to be met. So let's look at this in, in Psalm 37, and we'll be done. I'm going to give you three quick points here. And uh, this is what God uh, has used in my life. It's become my life verse. has really helped us in our calling to go to the Philippines. And this verse can really help you. Um, if there's a decision in your life you're a little bit unsure about, what does God want me to do? What is God's mind for this decision? Um, God will help you with that. And, and know this, God has a plan and a purpose for all of our lives. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. There is something that God wants you to do. And I like to tell my kids, Lucy is our oldest, our oldest daughter. She's 10. She'll be 11 this year. But I like to say, Lucy, there is only one Lucy Beeman in the world. God has made you. God has people that he's going to bring into your life, lives that he wants you to reach, lives he wants you to touch, and it has to be you to do it. God didn't create someone else to do that. It's for you. And we need to think of ourselves like that. God did not overlook you when he created you. God has something for you to do specifically. And God will give you, God has a desire for your life, and he will give you that desire. This is what I want you to do. And this verse will help you with that. Um, so let, let's look again at, 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 the, at the promise that God has made here. Let's look at the second half of the verse. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. God has the desire for you. He wants to give you that desire, but there is a condition to be met. And so we'll spend the rest of our time uh, focusing on how do we uh, meet that condition. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord. What does that mean? What does that mean to delight thyself in the Lord? I got three quick points here, and, uh, and then we'll be done. I hope this will help you. Uh, point number one, how do we delight ourselves in the Lord? And I believe it is this. Evaluate your relationship with God. Evaluate your relationship with God. Psalm 139, 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So firstly, to delight in the Lord, if you, want, if you want God to keep his end of the promise, you're going to have to meet this condition. To meet this condition, I believe you're going to have to be in right relationship with God. And so how are things with uh, authorities in your life? How do, you, how do you react when the pastor or your parents uh, uh, give you something to do? What is your attitude toward that? And then uh, what activities are you involved in? What, what, what music are you listening to? What are you watching? Where are you going? Um, that, that's all important in evaluating your relationship with God. So my wife and I, we, we, we started to do that. We, um, Lord, whatever you want us to do, we'll do. And um, we want to make sure our relationship is right with you. And so that's step number one, evaluate your relationship. Step number two, be willing. We have to be willing to do whatever God would have us to do. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Um, you might come to this verse, and um, God would lead you to something. Um, you need to be willing to do it, whatever that is. My wife and I, we even said in the Philippines, God, if you wanted us to come here, we would come here. We're willing to go. We're, not, we're a little unsure right now, um, but... But, but show us on some of the mission trips. We were always willing to go, God, if this is what you want us to do. So we have to be willing. And then uh, lastly, we need to wait on the Lord. Uh, I'll be honest, in 2016 when that pastor challenged me, Tom, would you come to the Philippines? Would you come and be a missionary here? Man, that just scared me. Uh, do I really leave everything? Do I leave my career? This just seems crazy. We talked about faith this morning a bit. And uh, by sight, it just did not make sense to me. I could not, financially, I leave my job, my wife leaves her job. I mean, we have bills to pay for. Our kids need to go to college. This doesn't make sense. Lord, do you really want us to do that? And God started to change our desires. Um, we had desires for things, but like I said, the, the big milestones in my life, when I got saved, and then when God started to change my desires, he ordered my desires uh, through the promise of this verse. 
And he, he gave us, um, I remember I was sitting in a meeting about a year ago, and we were talking about, um, I work at uh, Consumers Energy, uh, I'm an infrastructure architecture, architect there, and we were talking about backup redesign, and we were talking about um, ransomware attacks, and we were trying to strategize how we were going to keep the company safe. But the only thing I could think about is souls in the Philippines. God, this is what you're going to do. God, I really want to go. And I was texting my wife. I'll never forget that. I, I really think God wants us to go. God changed our desire. I don't know what happened to all those desires that we have. We even talk about it now. I think it was last week driving home from a church. We're like, man, we had all these big plans and all these desires, and they weren't bad things, but God changed them. Because God has a desire for your life, and God will give you those desires. He wants you to have that. But we have to delight in him. So how's your relationship with God? Um, are you willing to do whatever God would have you to do? And then the last point, wait. Sometimes you're just going to have to wait on the Lord. In 2016, um, I was a little unsure. God, I, I'm willing to go, but I'm not sure. Um, sometimes you're just going to have to wait on the Lord. Psalm 27, 14, our last verse here, says, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen mine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Maybe there's something in your life you'd say, Brother Tom, I think I am delighting in the Lord. I think my relationship with God is good. I think I am definitely willing to do whatever God would have me to do. Uh, sometimes you're just going to have to wait. And when you wait, God says that he will strengthen that desire in your heart. He will strengthen your heart. And that's what happened to us. In 2016, we had this little desire, God, is this what you want us to do? And that desire started to build and build until that was the only desire we had. Those other things, they, they weren't bad, but they just seemed so unimportant at that point. God had changed our desires, set our desires on him and what he had for us. So if there's a decision in your life, maybe it's college, maybe it's your career, maybe it's uh, something just being faithful in this church, uh, God wants to give you that desire. Delight in him. There are so many great promises in the word of God. I love his promises. And this is a great one here. If there's a big decision you're making, maybe God would call someone here to go to the mission field. I don't know. But God has called us to go, and he really helped us. God really helped us um, to solidify this calling uh, with his verse. And so I hope that was a blessing to you. But let's, let's pray, and then if there's any questions, we can uh, certainly go through that. Um, Father, we uh, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for just being so good to us. Um, thank you for the promises in your word. I pray that um, we would use this, Lord, if there's uh, a decision that we are making in our lives, something uh, big, Lord, and we're unsure about uh, God, I pray that you would um, use this verse just to comfort us, Lord, uh, knowing that you, uh, you have a great plan for our lives and there's something that you want to show us, uh, help us to delight in you. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.